So I'm back. I got a sharp pencil. Um, now I need to just tighten this up even more, uh, just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't take, doesn't need much. So uh, just little things like, like I might flare that out a little bit, and then that has to be consistent with everything. Uh, you can see I'm draw, drawing now even darker. So I know where I want to put my perforation marks. And, you know, a little flare like that. This is, this is all good. That K is, all, is good. This N is probably just about there. There's my O and my X. I want to do some little stuff to I hope anyways. I'm not sure if I'll do that yet. I'll just well, wait and see. But at this point, you want you want to have your lines nice and smooth, and uh, that way that way uh, uh, when you pounds, which I'll show you here relatively soon, uh, you don't have to think too much. All you have to do is trace. Uh, this is kind of a mess in here, so I'm going to clean that up so I can tell what I want to do a little bit better. There's my A. I'm sure my hand is getting in the way a little bit. Each line needs to be pleasing. I mean, you can't, when you paint and when you draw, you, you, you can't have choppiness, you know. It, it needs to be nice and smooth. So really uh, speed helps with that with your pencil. And it just takes practice. You'll, if you want to get good at it, you will. Well, I already need to sharp my pencil. The proper way to sharpen pencils is an exact way. It's just what I do. I, I work for an electric sign company for uh, 15 years or 12 years or whatever it was, I don't even know. But uh, they all called me old school. I really wasn't that old. I was only 40 at the time, or 40 to 50. But I did everything old school. So, anyways, you yeah, never got this ass. Make that a little thicker. And the A needs to be relatively the same as that. Exactly what I'll do with this. I might do, do something like, like that. I don't know. It goes the opposite way of that, but I don't mind it. Now, to say, I wanted, I wanted to move this A over just a little bit. So I'm going to start over here. Not that far. Make it darker so I can tell what's, which one I want to use. Probably stop right there. Okay, we're coming across here. Draw that. 
Now that that paint stroke will all be one color, but let's see. I'm thinking I want to do something like this. Oh, I think I'm gonna do that. Matches the O. Now the T. Easy. Not much to that. I think I might connect all that, but I'm not too sure yet. I'll stand back and look at it. Okay, and there you have somewhat of a, a tighter design. Uh, I think I'm ready to pounce it, and I'll show you what that is. Okay, uh, I'm back and uh, I'm going to uh, pounce it. So what this is, what I have is an electric pounce, and it creates a uh, electrical current that burns through the paper in little dots. I'll show you right here. You probably can't see that, but there's hundreds of little dots that I've just created. So all I have to do is, is trace this with this and don't, without touching that, because it'll shock me, but, um, uh, and then it'll create these holes and, uh, then at that point, then I, you'll see. <laughs> it's easier to show you than see. But uh, I'll start tracing this, and this is called the pounce pattern at this point, and, uh, and that's the next step before you paint. So. And at this point, I can edit again if I want to because this is this is creating a line that I will use powder to transfer onto onto my uh, image onto the board that I'm going to paint on. You notice I just draw right through whatever it is uh, if I want it to flow nicely. Uh, if you stop and start and try to get it to make that line match and that line match, it would be pretty hard to do. So, so just draw right through it. Thank you. 
a lot of this uh, is muscle memory. If, uh, if you if you try, if I like you saw me pounce this line here, go to this next one. So you strike the same arc or relatively the same. So it's just a little trick. Okay, I'm going to set that in my holder. Most of you will not have an electric pounce, I imagine. So um, there's a, a tool that you can buy at any arts and crafts store, typically, that uh, Michelangelo used. And it was used up until like 1980 when the electric pounce came out. Now the electric pounce is obsolete because we have plotters. So, but uh, this is called the pounce wheel and it has a handle. And at the end of it is a uh, wheel. And it has many little uh, furs. I'm just drawing them like short teeth. Just uh, kind of like kind of like that. Anyways, it uh, this wheel as you move it, it the, this turns and creates the little holes that was created by the electric pounds. So most of you could purchase one of these at uh, you know like any art store would have it. It's called the, it's called the pounce wheel. And they're five bucks, whatever, or whatever they are. I'm not sure what they are, but uh, but you could do the same thing that I just did with an electric pounce with one of those. So now I'm going to show you what I'm going to paint on for this session, and just uh, pounce it onto the onto the board, and uh, uh, my next filming will be painting. Okay, so um. Here's the here's the board that uh, that I'm going to paint this image on. I've uh, it's I've had this for a while. It's uh, obviously rust. I really love rust. I don't know why, but a lot of people do. Otherwise, I wouldn't try to do this. So I've got my my image here. Put that aside. I'm gonna put this on my board now. I've, I have uh, sprayed this with a uh, clear, so the rust won't be coming off on my hands. So, and it'll and it'll create a barrier between the rust and my and my paint. It still has the texture of the rust, which which will create a nice. Uh, a nice surface to where I can create an antique looking sign that's been out in the weather for as long as I've been alive and I've got gray hair, so, so that's what I want, how old I want it to look. So I cut the corners off in the excess paper, so I'm just going to match, match that up, match that up. And the beauty behind the pattern is if I was, if I had been off, you know, and centering it, I could move this image wherever I wanted to. So, you know, me, I, I just like to have things uh, already done so I don't have to think about it. So, Line this up at the bottom. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move 
it over this way just here. Magnets are nice so you can not. Uh, have to tape. Under the tape, tape, under tape, tape. It's old. Anyways. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have that pounced. Now I'm going to go get some uh, some baby powder. Okay, this is this is a highly sophisticated piece of equipment. It's a sock with a old sock. I don't wear these anymore. But, uh, I tied a knot into it, and it's got that uh, stuff you put in line in a, in a snap line. The, the bright orange, so I, I assume that will show up pretty well. So, so these are going into the holes that that I uh, use that electric pounds. The holes that it created, so it's just transferring the whole image onto my board, or in this case, my piece of sheet metal. Creates kind of a mess, but you know. And I don't know why, but I always rub over everything like this. I think just to clean, kind of clean the paper up is why I do it. But I do it. And you get chalk on your hands. But don't wash it off yet because you've got to remove, remove the paper. And hopefully that'll go through it full enough for me to paint. And you probably can't see that. But it's there. And that is your pounced pattern onto your onto your board or your whatever it is you're going to paint on looks like I missed a few lines but I don't care I can since I drew it I can draw it but draw it again uh, so next time I'll have this ready for paint and we'll catch you next time thank you